Hey yo friends in the two wheel kingdom, Zach Kors here with Revzilla and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider. Our guest today is Yamaha's R7. No, not that R7 from way back in the day. This is Yamaha's mid-sized parallel twin, all wrapped up in slippery racy bodywork to make it look like a race replica and offered at a price of $9,000. So we know the R7's fraternal twin, the MT-07, did quite well on Daily Rider. So I think that bodes well for this bike and I've been looking forward to it. So let's hit the road. All right, everybody, here we are, R7. Uh, where do we start? I mean, with styling, probably, right? Um, a lot of the comparisons I'm gonna make today for what it's worth are gonna be to that MT-07 because it shares a lot of um, architecture and parts with that model. And obviously, the biggest difference really is the look of it, um, the bodywork, which, for what it's worth, I'm sure you make your own decision about this, but I think Yamaha kinda nailed it. It looks awesome. <laughs> uh, Ah, it looks it looks wicked. It looks racy. Um, it's got that kind of modern stinger tail section uh, brakes. So 298 millimeter rotors up front. So that's the same. I don't know if it's the same part number, but it's the same uh, disc size as the MT09 Tracer 9. I believe these are Advix calipers. Um, and then there's this Stonkin Brembo uh, radio pull lever, uh, adjustable radio pull lever, which is a uh, big braking upgrade, especially compared to the MT-07. At the heart of it though, same 689cc parallel twin, and uh, instead of an aluminum twin spar frame, of course, there's a sort of quasi-trellis steel frame. The steering angle is steeper on the R7 than the MT-07. Um, the wheelbase is shorter, there's less clearance, the seat is higher, um, so you know, they all kind of they pitched it all forward and put more bias on the front wheel, which is more of a sport bike trait. Yeah, fully adjustable upside down fork, um, and uh, shock is adjustable for preload and rebound damping. We'll talk more about the, some of those upgrades as we ride. For now, let's fire this bad Nelly up. Yeah. You recognize that sound, right? Yeah. All right, well, it is very warm in the sun here. So I'm gonna start riding, get some airflow, and we'll learn what this sucker is like on the daily ride. Yep. Little bug just joined us. Off you go. All right, roll along the road here. We can start talking about some specs. I mentioned um, the engine size. Uh, I don't think there's actually any claimed horsepower number from Yamaha for this bike, but it'll be the same basically as the MT-07, which is 65 horsepower, something like that, 40-something uh, foot-pounds of torque. It is a 3.4 gallon gas tank, and when it is full, the bike tipped the Daily Rider scales at 415 pounds. So uh, yeah, very light. Uh, especially for a sport bike. People will point out that it's uh, not really appreciably lighter than an R6, which <laughs> I'm gonna do my best not to make too many R6 comparisons during this ride because, uh, I don't know, I feel like that's a whole other podcast, you know? But we will we'll touch on that at some point. Anyway, the seat height is 32.9 inches, which is, um, it feels very reasonable to me. You can see I got a nice bend in my, uh, in my leg, flat-footed. Uh, but I'm six foot two, so a little bit on the taller side. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit less approachable than an MT-07. But um, in general, it feels small. It's very narrow. Um, and yeah, pretty approachable, especially considering how racy it looks. Away we go. <laughs> One thing that is an option that is on this bike is the um, quick shifter. So you can quick shift up, uh, but not down. Uh, and that is a $200 part that you can get from Yamaha. The ECU is um, pre-wired for it, so it's plug and play. Uh, so I guess technically this is, uh, yeah, $8,200 R7 that we're riding. I'm sorry, $9,200 R7 that we're riding. Um, but in any case, come on, reach over. Uh, I think uh, worth it, uh, worth 200 bucks, I would say for the um, quick shifter. It's a cool feature. We'll experiment with it more later when we have some upshifting to do. 
the riding position is quite aggressive, uh, more aggressive than I was expecting it to be, certainly. Um, it, uh, Aprilia came out with the RS660 earlier in 2021, and of course we rode that bike on Daily Rider, and that bike is sort of surprisingly relaxed and reasonable for a sport bike. It looks very sporty, but it's uh, you know fairly upright. Uh, to me, the R7 feels a lot more aggressive. You lean forward pretty hard on your wrists. As an example, part of the presentation the Yamaha gave about this bike, they showed um, the YZF R3 rider triangle and then the YZF R6 rider triangle and the R7 is almost as aggressive as an R6. So it's pretty committed considering the, the sort of engine and the general demeanor of the bike is not nearly as aggressive as, uh, as an R6. Got a lot of questions about the rider triangle and the ergonomics and that kind of thing on Instagram and that's something I did want to address right off the bat because it's pretty aggressive, especially compared to uh, an MT-07, which of course it's hard not to compare the two, those two bikes. And on the topic of riding position, this is probably going to be one of your least favorite things to do on an R7 is to, is to bomb along the freeway here. <laughs> it's not particularly good at this, I would say. Like I said, just lots of weight on your hands, not a lot of leg room. But that being said, within the confines of a sort of um, a sporty riding position, it does pretty well. But that's a choice the Yamaha made, uh, seemingly very consciously um, wanting to make it aggressive. So that's the price you pay. <laughs> so this is the part where we talk about fuel mileage usually. And uh, I have not been getting fuel mileage that's quite as good as Yamaha claims, which I think was 58 or, yeah, I wanna say, yeah, 60. Um, it's having like low 50s. Um, and obviously this is a bike, I always, I always have put this caveat in there about fuel mileage and how it matters how you ride and whatever. But this bike especially, I think, because this engine is really, you know, designed to be economical and friendly and polite and tame. And if you do that, you're, you're gonna get you're gonna get great fuel economy. But uh, the bike, you know, from a chassis standpoint and an attitude standpoint and an aesthetic standpoint, uh, it's not supposed to be polite or tame. Uh, it's supposed to be aggressive. And if you ride it that way, it's gonna change. If you're always winding it out in third gear on your favorite twisty road or something like that, you're gonna see your fuel mileage plummet. But I don't know, you know, it's, uh, I guess in some ways, the, the glass half full outlook on that is that um, you can chug along in high gears and get good gas mileage if you want to, or you can uh, hammer on it and have fun and you have a sporty bike to work with. So I, I guess that's good. All right, well, I am not sad that the the freeway stint is coming to an end on the R7, <laughs> particularly. Uh, but I don't want to forget to talk about mirrors. And I will say these mirrors are better than I was expecting. I wouldn't go so far as to say they're good, but uh, they're not bad. I don't know, they're sort of smoother than I thought they'd be and not, not, as, not as egregious a view of my elbow as I thought <laughs> I was gonna get on this bike. Uh, I don't think they look too bad either on, the, on a style front. Could be worse. I adjusted the throttle free play on this bike because it was super loose. It feels so much better. Ari Henning would be proud of me. All right, let's get into the neighborhood here. We can do our stop sign challenge. Sport bike's not historically great at the stop sign challenge where we go for zero miles an hour without putting our feet down. Um, but the R7 is very approachable. Very uh, chug -a -lug motor and lightweight. First stop sign, da, nope. It's, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit of a lack of focus on my part. I was looking down the road in front of me. Gotta look up, eyes on the horizon, sort of. All right, second attempt. Yeah, yeah, there we got it. Oh, no, you know, not, not perfect, we got it. And in general around town, the R7 uh, is pretty good. Not very comfortable. I'm not sure how many more times I'm gonna repeat that. Um, but, but in general, you know, the big difference that this powertrain has with, um, you know, uh, the R6 that uh, I said I wasn't gonna make too many comparisons to, uh, is that this engine is not just acceptable around town, it's good at this. This is what it likes doing. It likes operating between, you know, two and 5,000 RPM and just, you know, uh, 
taking a quick step away from a stop sign. Uh, it's using the engine very much in its in its happy place. Um, so you don't feel like you're sort of like trundling around. Hey, oh, got that one. You don't feel like you're trundling around wasting the engine because it likes this. It's good at it. Let me get here. Oh yeah, that one felt real good. Oh yeah, we even got a little roll back there. So point being, uh, it's where the R7 really benefits a great deal from uh, its its lineage with the MT-07. It's just, uh, you know, the MT-07 is, is terrific at, uh, at bopping around town and uh, this bike benefits from that, certainly. Last step sign in the step sign challenge. Yes, very good. How was that? Three? Four? Not sure. Yeah, not bad around town. Just my hands hurt from leaning over on them. All right, Lover's Lane, where we talk about passenger accommodations. There are passenger foot pegs, there is a passenger seat. Uh, your passenger is not going to be very happy <laughs> unless they're quite small. Um, the only good thing I really have to say about, or I should say, uh, my lady had to say about the passenger accommodations is that there seems like there's a little bit more leg room than some sport bikes. Some sport bikes historically are just terrible, right? I mean, they don't even like pretend to make any concessions there. And I think because this is based on the, the MT-07 foundation, the, the passenger pegs have, do have a little bit more room, um, but the seat's very narrow. Uh, it's pretty hard, especially at the back. Um, and the the passenger, of course, is going to have to, you know, the rider position is leaned forward, so the passenger is going to have to lean forward onto the back of them uh, if they realistically want to have anything to hold on to. So, not super accommodating, not super surprising, I'm sure, uh, but there you have the passenger report. <laughs> Got just a little bit of free road here. Sort of lean on the tires just a little bit. And I'll say that, uh, you know, doing this on an R7 instead of an MT-07, for example, I'll, I'll admit it, 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 it's a little bit more rewarding. You know, you move your butt around on the seat, you lean forward a little bit more, feels a little racier. You, you know, if someone said they felt cooler doing it, I would say, okay, fair enough. You know, practically, day to day, I don't know that it's, you know, quote unquote, faster. Um, but it all, you know, plays into the the mantra of the R7, which is part of, you know, it's part marketing, it's part truth, it's it's sportier, um, and yeah, it's satisfying to sling down a twisty road. It's fun. And to be fair to Yamaha, uh, there are some technical details that are different. Also, you know, it's not just bodywork and and brochure photos. They're different. Um, I mentioned some of the, you know, the, the steering angle is steeper. Um, the, the fork setup is beefier. Um, the fork offset is reduced. That brings the, the uh, fork tubes closer to the headstock. Um, and that uh, in turn, you know, contributes to shortening the wheelbase. And so some things change structurally um, and, and it adds to the capability of the bike. So, you know, uh, objectively or on, on paper or whatever um, it has more capability than uh, an MT-07 uh, I just don't yeah I, I don't I don't notice it in a way that's super appreciable on a, in a daily rider kind of situation that's all all right coming up to this stoplight we'll get on the brakes we'll talk about brakes um, yeah I just about carried the back wheel there uh, engage the ABS which is standard at first, I wasn't impressed by the brakes. I was kind of like, I don't know, they feel basically the same. And then um, one of my colleagues talked me out of it. He was like, no, nah, no, nah, you're crazy. Those brakes are better, better hardware, a little better bite. And if nothing else, you know, you get this nice adjustable lever and a Brembo Master Cylinder is pretty, uh, pretty high spec stuff. How much time we got? We got time to talk about the dash? We can talk about the dash probably, right? Can you see it in there? Pretty basic uh, two color um, LCD in there, a uh, bar attack across the top there. Um, and speed big in the middle there. Fuel gauge off to the right, clock at the bottom. Gear position indicator at top left. And then this rocker switch here is where you um, set and cycle through um, the parameters that it shows on the bottom there. Pretty simple. Trip meters, Odo, 
air temperature which says 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Goodness gracious. That's, uh, that can't be right. I think it's because we're sitting at a stop sign. Uh, yeah, coolant temp, average fuel, that kind of thing. So yeah, uh, very, very basic dash, but clean, has lots of good information. Um, everything's shown on there, it's easy to use, it's intuitive. All right, green light, away we go. Quick shifter, engage. <laughs> on to Vermont Street. Been a while since we gave a honk to Vermont Street. There we go. Uh, we hit a bunch of bumps there. What else have we uh, not talked about? I, uh, spring rates. Uh, the springs are stiffer than the MT-07, which I think stands to reason they made it sort of uh, sportier, a little more aggressive. So that's another another little update that I don't know if I mentioned up to this point. Anyway, I do want to circle back to the engine on the MT-07 uh, MT platform uh, because I do, you know, I mentioned that it's really good at bopping around town and uh, smooth on the freeway and that kind of thing. And uh, I think that it is important um, to, yeah, to note that, 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 um, you know, this bike does step into the, to the sort of hole in the lineup, um, that the R6 has left, um, since Yamaha is not going to make it anymore. And, and I just, I want to be clear that this engine is just better for riding around town. It's just better. Uh, you know, if, if, <laughs> If you think you want an inline four because you want the scream, you want the power, it's largely vanity. It really is. And as long as you're okay with that, then you can you can get a 600 Super Sport if you want. Um, but the the delivery of the R7 to the market, I think, will be an interesting show of who wants a sport bike because it looks like a sport bike and you and you feel like a sport rider when you're riding it, and who is just too attached to the idea of making lots of horsepower at 13 to 15,000 RPM for reasons that are unknown to anyone else. All right, and uh, for the test that nobody asked for, we're gonna take an R7 down a gravel road section kind of thing. <laughs> uh, there is no TC, so we can get Swayze. Uh, and of course this is, you know, a <laughs> this is the uh, engine from uh, the MT-07 and the <laughs> Tenere 700. So, you know, it has some, it's a good, good engine for riding in the dirt. The bike, not so much. Not so much. Uh, it is a little wobbly and yeah, all the weight on your wrists doesn't, doesn't help the <laughs> tire deflecting off all the bumps and that kind of thing. Let's hit a jump though, shall we? We're here, we made it this far. <laughs> All right, that was actually pretty, <laughs> pretty good showing on the jump from the R7, I thought. Nice, stuck the landing. Now it's time for a woolly. Uh, yep, yeah. I mean, MT-07 roots, right? So, willies all day if you want to, all day. <laughs> all right, we can go for a back in now. Yeah, not really, you know. ABS kind of gets in the way there. It does have a slipper clutch for what it's worth. Well, time for the U-turn test. And the parking lot's full. Bull spit, man. We're gonna have to phone it in here. We're gonna have to line up with this with this dot here, or this uh, line here. And then we're gonna go full lock, feet up, steering, turning. Uh, yeah, two, two and a half. Two and a half, almost three. Um, a little awkward as usual for a sport bike. And uh, that's when it's tough, right? You like lean forward, you can't see over your shoulder very well. So U-turns are not necessarily the easiest on bikes like these. Not too bad uh, from the steering sweep perspective though. I'm pretty sure that's basically what uh, the Tracer 9 did. And uh, I don't know, maybe a couple other bikes as well. But there you have it, daily ride on the YZF R7. I'll hear a couple more thumpy notes from this exhaust. That's wicked. Sounds great. Sounds great. And I don't think you can convince me otherwise. <laughs> uh, all right, time for Instagram questions here, as usual. Starting off with Trident Special. 
who asks, has the name triggered grumpy middle-aged men in the same way it has in Europe? <laughs> so that is a reference to the previous R7 the Yamaha produced. Uh, I'm not going to go into the, the history super deep here, but um, if you're not familiar with that bike, I do recommend you look it up. It's very cool. Um, sort of, uh, yeah, Noriyuki Haga era of world superbike. It's a pretty wicked uh, machine worth looking up if you have time. Next question is from Roma258 who asks, why get the R7 over the MT-07 if you, you're mainly using it for commuting or riding around the city? Simple answer here, no reason. There is no reason, aside from looks. The MT-07 is a better city bike. You have worse brakes, you have some things that are worse, maybe, but no, it's better. The MT-07 is better for the city, full stop, you won't convince me otherwise. If you're just going to do daily rides, get an MT-07. The next question is from M Panza 20 who asks, for track days, the answer has always been SV650. Does the R7 change that? And I happen to know that M Panza 20 has an SV650 for riding on the track, so it's pertinent to his life in particular. And it's a great question. Um, I think, you know, yeah, from, from a factory showroom perspective, yeah, it does change that. I think that this is a better track day option. I think the ergonomics are better for it. I think, you know, it looks the part. Um, my only caveat would be that uh, the aftermarket is still just so full of stuff for SV650s, right? It's so easy to find a used SV650, maybe already set up for the track, and to find parts for it and, you know, rear sets and all the things that you need to make an SV650 into a track bike are just still going to be so much easier to find than for the the MT-07 R7 platform. Um, but I think that hopefully it'll shift, and this is the gamble that Yamaha is making, that people are going to you know buy into it. And um, So yeah, I don't think you should shy away from it if you're interested, because I think there's uh, something to be said for it. Hey, 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 hey. All right, all right, come on. We're doing, we're doing a thing here. Next question, another comparison from Matthias Harris, who asks, obvious question, but what would you pick between this and the Aprilia RS660? And are these twins better than Triumph's sweet, sweet Daytona 675, albeit discontinued? Uh, so first up, the RS660 is a very interesting comparison to me because the RS660 in a lot of ways is much more advanced. It makes more horsepower. It has a much more advanced suite of electronics. It has a TFT dash. Um, it, it is, it is uh, yeah, faster. Uh, and and more advanced in a lot of ways, but the R7 is more aggressive from a rider triangle standpoint, uh, which I think is so interesting. So it's the, the R7 is simpler and cheaper, uh, but more aggressive. Even though the R660 is more expensive and more advanced and faster, <laughs> so it's an odd, it's an odd question. Um, I would go R660 uh, if I if I could shoot the lock off my wallet and do that because uh, I appreciate the comfortable riding position um, and it'll be thrilling. Uh, a little bit more thrilling on a on a racetrack um so yeah i'm a little surprised that yamaha didn't go with a, a more relaxed riding position on this bike a la rs660 but uh it didn't uh you know that was a decision yamaha made and uh we'll see how it shakes out for him as for daytona 675 uh kind of a different category altogether you know 675 is much more powerful and um i don't know i, I think i would probably get an rs660 over a 675 as well for what it's worth Next question is from Gregory Nemesdi. Gregory N. M. S. D. Uh, Gregory Nemesdi. Whatever. The question is: Is it that much better than the Ninja 650 to justify the price difference? Interesting question. And no, it's not. I mean, a Ninja 650. It depends what you want to do. You want to go to a track day? Yeah, I think it's going to be better. Definitely, it's more aggressive. It's more the designed to take on that kind of extra sporty riding. But as a daily rider, as a as an around town bike, a commuter bike, an Ninja 650 is going to be a lot more comfortable. Um, I don't like the engine dynamic of the of the Ninja 650 as much as the, I like the the 270 crank parallel twin with a thump instead of the sort of uh, classic um, Ninja 400 Ninja 650 kind of style of of uh, engine, but that's uh, other than that, no. The the Ninja 650 is not necessarily worse than the Spike, depending on what you're doing. Next question is from 512 megabyte flash drive, <laughs> who asks, "What is the best and worst thing about the bike?" Oof, this is a great question. That's why I saved it. It's such a good question. Good question. What is the be the best thing? I think is the way that it looks. I love the way it looks. I think they just crushed that. It's awesome. It looks totally wicked it looks like it belongs in a race paddock and i love that as for the worst part ah gosh good one it kind of stumped me here uh, it's a little bit of a cop-out but it's uncomfortable 
that's my least favorite part about it. I know this is kind of, you know, it's like, it looks awesome and it's uncomfortable or kind of like, you know, two sides of the same coin, but uh, that's, that's what I got for you. Great question. Thank you. Last question is from Evan, the bassist, uh, who asks, does it make sense? Oof, heavy, heavy, short, but powerful question, Evan. Does it make sense? I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, from a daily rider standpoint, no. In, in the, the glass half empty outlook on the R7 is why did they, why did they make it so racy and yet so tame and polite? Just do what Aprilia did with the R660. Make it, make it a Ninja 650 style thing where it's like upright and kind of comfortable, but it looks totally racy. Why not just do that? Because that's what's at the uh, heart of this bike is a practical, nice machine. I don't know why the clip-ons are so low and it's so aggressive. Um, so from that standpoint, no, it doesn't make sense. Um, but the thing is about motorcycles making sense is that that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with how successful they are, how much people like them, right? Because we don't necessarily ride motorcycles because they make sense. Uh, we ride them because they make us feel cool or, or we, we love the way uh, that, that it feels to, to ride them down a road or around a track or whatever. So um, does it make sense? Well, that's up to you, Evan, and everyone else uh, for you to decide. Uh, for me, though, I not really. <laughs> All right, that's it for Instagram questions. Thank you so much, as usual, for submitting all those awesome questions. I really appreciate it. Let's put the sucker on the Daily Rider leaderboard, shall we? All right. All right, everybody, here we are inside Revzilla West and the Daily Rider leaderboard, of course, and the Versus 1000, hanging out next to the leaderboard right now. What are you doing here, Versus 1000? <laughs> Been months since you were on the board. Anyway, <clears throat> we got the R7 in the hopper, ready to rumble on the Daily Rider leaderboard. MT07, all the way up here. Uh, so that's something, you know, um, the R7 is not going to compete with the MT-07, even though it's slightly, you know, higher spec brakes and uh, stiffer suspension. And that, that is all good stuff. But, oh man, that MT-07, rowdy, fun. Yeah, we're not going to touch that. R660 is a better place to start. Honda CBR500R, another sporty bike, but very comfortable. Not as exciting or sexy as an R7, but on the daily, better. Daytona 765 Moto 2 down here. Um, R7 slightly more comfortable, I would say. Also, you know, the, the Daytona 765, great bike, fun to ride, um, but in a lot of ways, similar to an R6 in so much as like, I remember those like little first gear wheelies I did, you know, slow wheelies on the R7 is kind of wrap around, out of away from a stop sign or something like that. Um, just playful stuff like that. That's the kind of thing that uh, full zoot super sport isn't really going to do. By the time it power wheelies, you're like probably already breaking the speed limit and going too fast. And uh, point is, I give the nod to the R7. So let's go up a little ways. Probably better than RC30. It's got ABS, a little more comfortable, less heat, that kind of thing. Um, here we go. Royal Enfield INT 650. Sort of classically styled, um, naked bike, good looking, handsome, ABS, fun engine, great sound. Totally different bikes. I'll admit that. But sitting next to each other in my garage, Royal Enfield INT650 Yamaha R7 for a month of commuting, on the daily, I am going to take the Royal Enfield, more often than not. So there you go, R7 uh, falls right here, but better than Daytona 765, not as good as an RS660, basically as I promised. I hope that you'll agree. <laughs> um, there we go, yeah, another bike on the board. The list groweth, um, and my thanks groweth for you hanging out for another Daily Rider. Thanks so much. As usual, I hope you had fun, I hope you learned something, and I hope to see you next time on Daily Rider. Peace out. Oh, Wobbly Davidson. You gonna drag race, bro? Oh, oh. Got a pretty big engine there. Pretty big front wheel. You gonna drag race? Oh, is he looking at me? Oh my god, is he looking at me, you guys? Oh, we're doing it. We're drag racing. <laughs> I don't think he even knows we're racing, but I won. Sick. <laughs>